Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 64. This episode is Steel Saunders of Steel Wars. That's right, we got him. The hardest working man in podcasting took the time to just hang out. And Steel is hilarious and awesome. And so much of his backstory, I had no clue. Uh, So it was really cool to dive into that. Uh, We talked about how he started in stand-up in Australia and how Australia has like a stand-up community that sort of cultivated that. Had no clue about that. That sounds awesome. And we talk about how he got into podcasting, working for a network over there. We get into how he and I actually met at Celebration last year. And uh, surprisingly, he remembered. That's, uh, I didn't expect that at all. Um, but we talked about his uh, his marketing mind and the fact that he had like a streetwear company back in Australia and how that translated to things like Your Snoke Theory Sucks and Ignite the Green and other great taglines from Steel Wars. Uh, and then we couldn't have him on without talking about his interview with Harrison Ford. That's right. Harrison Ford. Steel has talked to him. And even left it a shirt. Amazing. And then we talked about his uh, his chat with Ben Mendelsohn, which is like, dude, sometimes the stars just align in the way that they're supposed to, and Steele got to talk to Ben Mendelsohn. It's awesome. Highly recommend his show. Uh, definitely check out everything that I've talked about. Uh, he, he really puts in the work, puts out quality content. Steele's doing it right. So uh, I'm going to stop talking. Here is the interesting podcast, episode number 64 with Steel Saunders. Theme song time. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, you're you perfect. Doing? I'll stop it. <laughs> <laughs> How's your day going? Ah, uh, pretty good actually. Yeah, just uh, getting some more clips from Comic Con ready for podcasts and stuff. So yeah, how was that? I've never been. Ah, it was it was amazing. It was really fun. Um, yeah, just a really I don't know. Everyone uh, seemed to have a good time. So sure, sure. It was. Uh, yeah, Comic Con dreams came true. Yeah, for sure, for sure. We got a lot of great news, absolutely. And you, yeah. Comic Con reminds me that you may be the hardest working podcaster I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> the sheer volume of content that you're able to put out is incredible. Ah, uh, cheers. I just, um, yeah, I, I just don't want to talk to anyone unless it's recorded. So, <laughs> same, same. I have yeah. no friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Which, uh, how many years have you, I'm, this is not your first year at Comic-Con. No, I think it's my fifth year. Like I went a long time ago. It was Breaking Bad's final season year. I went that year. Nice. And then I think I, I missed two years, I think, at mm-hmm. least one. And then I came back for the Rebels year. And then I've been to everyone since. So like Force Awakens and all that sort of stuff. The Force Awakens one was amazing. Oh, I'm sure. I am sure. What has it changed at all in the last few years? Because I feel like maybe in the last like five years, entertainment specifically, like stuff getting streamlined more and it's getting bigger. Like stuff that wasn't as cool maybe like ten years ago is really cool now. Like, is that yeah. changing at all? Yeah, well, you definitely see just with the costumes oh, that, yeah. like, like you see the trends. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, sure. There was hardly any Game of Thrones this year. Uh, there was like one, maybe like three years ago, that was just Harley Quinn. Yeah. Everyone, <laughs> everyone in the um, Suicide Squad Harley Quinn get up like that T-shirt and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, you you really sort of see things go through waves. But the costuming was, uh, I, I think, a little bit down this year. This year wasn't as hyped because there wasn't that big Marvel panel and stuff like that. So, right. um, but like this year seemed a bit mellower as mm-hmm. far as, um, you know, like the, the Clone Wars thing seemed to be the biggest 
sort of surprise. Sure. But but like like you could get into Hall H really easily. Like, wow. Yeah, my friend Dom, he like walks straight into the Breaking Bad panel in Hall H, which which sort of tears me up that yeah. I didn't. <laughs> And and yeah, my wife just on on the Saturday, like walked in without much fuss to um, see the RZA from the Wu Tang Clan. What? He had a panel. Yeah, dude, this seemed like the year then. Yeah, it was it was it was really fun. But it was just I don't know. All the Star Wars fans seemed like that Clone Wars news sort of put everyone in a real sort of upbeat mood. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, it was cool to hang out with um, with them all. Yeah, sure, sure. And then the after party put together, like you just you just killing it, man. You're killing it. <laughs> Doing Try. Yeah. Try. <laughs> Doing well. Doing well. But you're obviously I'm gonna I'm gonna state the obvious. You might be from Australia. I'm just gonna guess. Yeah, that's um that's some pretty sweet detective work. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's either Australia or Boston. And uh I'm gonna go with Australia. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely definitely Australia. Definitely Australia. I always think because I've taken like certain uh, like accent classes and whatnot with acting, and they always talk about similarities, oh, okay. you know, and like yeah. how Australians would say "park the car" is very similar to how a Bostonian would say "park the car." It's the park the car. Yeah, very similar to park the car. Park like, the car. Oh, I see. We have a jumping off point. <laughs> what uh? What part of Australia are you from? Uh, from Melbourne, which oh, yeah. is d- down in the bottom corner. That is one of two places that I know of. Yeah, it, it seems to be in the top two. Yeah, I would say so. For the sake of us chatting now, I'm going to say it's number one. So, congratulations. Uh, I don't have any... Um, I love like my city and my country, but I, I, don't, I don't really... Fair. I don't really care what how people rank it. And stuff. <laughs> I, I don't... Um, yeah, I just... Like I, I never, I always find all that you're from here, you're from there, really strange. Like I don't get really amped up for the Olympics because <laughs> I, I, like it doesn't bother me that someone who was born on the same chunk of land as me can swim really fast. Sure. <laughs> fair, fair. I, 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 I don't know them as well as the person from um, Denmark that can swim really fast. So I, I can't, I can't put in. I, I um. I, I was actually shocked because I'm not a sporting person at all, but about 15 years ago, I went to the Australian football with my friend Clint and I hadn't been since I was a little kid and his team was playing and they lost and he was upset afterwards. <laughs> and, and, and that shocked me. I was like, Oh, are you upset? They lost. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's, that's very interesting. Okay. Ah, oh. so see. your mood is affected. Like it, it hadn't <laughs> occurred to me that, um, you know, I guess like in a grand final or something, but yeah, it was just a regular game and he was upset. But I, I, I think that like, it's just me being very naive to the, um, the mindset of the sporting fan. Sure. Sure. It's definitely like where a lot of people are, I would say can be more inclined to be wired to really be into something. And I always related it to like, cause I wasn't big into sports either growing up, but I was really big into movies. And I was like, the fact that I know like these behind the scenes people, the director, the actors, what they've been in, is essentially the same thing as you knowing the stats of a player. Just different ways to go oh. about the same thing. Oh yeah, everyone's a nerd. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, if, like if you are like I am, I I think it's sad. This is just my opinion, but sure. if if you're not, if you're not a, a nerd about something, I. I I find that hard to comprehend. Agreed. Like whether it's about sewing or golf or uh, gardening, yeah, swimming, whatever. <laughs> like I, I, I assume that everyone's into something. They have to be, what, right? Yeah. Or I, at one point were into something. Yeah, I'm the same. I'm wired the same way. It's like, how do you not have what? What occupies your brain space? In the yeah. Downtime? I, uh, but I think when people think about it like that, then they're like, oh, yeah, I love, you know, criminal minds. Right. I love the criminal minds universe. <laughs> so I, 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 I'd, I'd like to, yeah. I, I, it'd just be weird to meet, oh, what are you really into? Nah. 
<laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I guess I eat uh, sometimes. Sleep uh, occasionally. <laughs> yeah, people that are into sleep, that's um relatable. <laughs> <laughs> So when, I know that you worked when you were in Australia. You worked for a news company thing. How do you organization? Is that the correct term? Oh, you mean uh, yeah, like a, a TV network. Network. Uh, that's the one. It's, yeah, it's just a, ch- a channel. I didn't like work. I, I I did freelance stuff for them and and like guested on their panel show. It was um so it's Network Ten, which is sort of um one of the big three networks in australia i guess there's five but there's three big commercial networks and um yeah it was just their morning tv show called um studio a and it's kind of like the circle but it's a mix of girls and guys Mm -hmm. and it's pretty much like that and so yeah i i did i would guest on the panel and then i did a few um like Star Wars things for them. I interviewed Harrison Ford and yeah, went did. to went to Celebration in Orlando, which was it was the perfect thing to get sent somewhere that you were going anyway. Yeah, <laughs> fair. It fair. was um it, it was amazing to uh yeah it was it was very strange. Like I I I, I look back at that weekend with just sheer bliss. Like a guy picked me up in a giant black van to take me to the hotel nice and then thought it was weird that i wanted to sit in the front seat with him (laughs) i was too (laughs) i was too hyped i needed to talk to someone i got there i was so excited i'd like seen like all star wars fans at the airport like ray park was on my plane what uh i saw like jeremy bullock as i was getting off so i was (laughs) I need someone to talk to. And this van was like this, whatever it was, like one of those, um, ah, oh, what are those giant black sort of like secret service? So like the Escalade uh, type thing? Yeah, 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 that sort of thing. That was like to be in the back seat of that, I was too far from him <laughs> to, to express myself. And not that he wanted to, he cared what I had to say, but I just needed to get it out right. how excited I was. So. <laughs> Yeah, I was I was rocking I was riding shotgun. Relatable, I'm into that. Wait, so this was the the celebration, the last one in Orlando. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the last Jedi. Okay, there's no way you're gonna remember this, but at the 40th Am panel, hmm? okay, when you when you walked in, you're in maybe the fourth or fifth row, I would say. Yeah. There, there was a there were a couple guys in the row. And then you came up and you're like, hey, can you hold these seats Oh, wow, really quick? was that you? That was me. Yeah, of course I remember that. <laughs> I still had the stickers and like stuff you gave us. I was like, I think that was steel. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I um, had like the press wristband. Mm-hmm. But then, so there was like a press area. And... So, like, my camera crew and that was sitting there and uh, my rep from Disney. And I, um, yeah, I said to her, I'm like, hey, I don't, I don't want to be a dick. But um, <laughs> this is like, like, this is like a heavy event for me and my friends. This and is my thing. W- would you mind? I, I will come because I had to record something straight after. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I-, I will come straight back at the end of the panel. But I just is it like are you offended if I I just like like experience this with my friends and she's like of course dear of course because <laughs> she she had this really weird um uh sort of experience of just thinking at the start of the weekend that I was just like a random reporter sent from Australia oh gotcha. Like, you know, that just did this, like, this is just another thing. Like, next week I'm off to the tennis or something to cover that. And then she, like, (laughs) at the end of the first day, she's like, all right, I have to ask, why do people keep coming up and talking to you? (laughs) I'm like, these are my people. This is my spot. Like, I would be here anyway. And, um, yeah, so I um, bolted down to where you guys were. And then for my friends that were sort of in the overnight line, I, um, with your help, we got a few seats together. And um, yeah, of course I remember that because I, 
I was so stressed. I was like, I just want to do like, you know, my friends have like suffered all night. Like I went down there and hung out till about four in the morning, but you know, getting to go back to the bed was <laughs> a luxury. <laughs> yeah. It, it doesn't sound like much, but it, it, it definitely, um, Oh, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. I, I noticed after two nights, people were pretty sour. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, I did not do the 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 episode eight panel because I I don't have it in me. <laughs> One night on the concrete was like okay, uh, I think I think we're good. I think, yeah, I think I'm so fine. <laughs> I, I did both nights respect. until about until, no no, but only until about three or four. Less respect. And then, <laughs> that's what I said to people there. I'm like, and like you wouldn't go back now, like right. if you if you had the option, you'd stay. And it was like, just go then, just go. <laughs> but man they love they still remind me about it to this very day those um the spite the um <laughs> anger leads to hate hate leads to suffering true and uh and and, and suffer i went home <laughs> <laughs> i like it how it just make it way worse it's a, it's such a good trait that's a good that's a Good oh, yeah. thing to have. Has character. to, right? <laughs> yeah. But um yeah, I so remember that because I was so like I was excited that I was getting the seats for my friends, so it, I'd, you know, be a, a slight solid. Mm -hmm. And um and that I had help because there's I like I had a backpack. There's only like I I, yep. I felt like I, I took out like I, I was taking my socks off individually to put on <laughs> like, I didn't I didn't I didn't have enough stuff with me to like vouch for all these seats. And then when I saw you guys and I'm like, Oh, can you guys help? And you like were very um you were happy to help and, and then you like knew the podcast and like the stickers. So it was just like that's why I had the best weekend ever. Cause like that's a three way I'm helping someone out. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm meeting other Star Wars fans and, and people like my silly little podcast. So I was, I was in a pure state of bliss and, and that moment of you helping me get the seats just highlights that. Well, and, and, uh, and I never, I, yeah, I, I, when you said, I, I don't know if you remember this and I'm, I, I was just like, I bet you I do whatever he's going to say. I bet you do. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know what? That surprises me. I, because I remember, wait, because I mean, dude, that panel. Anyone coming out of that panel like feeling anything other than just like pure bliss is amazing. Because that was like easily one of the greatest things ever. Whoever put that together was like, we're gonna have this person, this person, have them all up, and then have Harrison come out, and then play a Carrie Fisher tribute video, and then through your tears, the curtains will open, and there's John Williams. You're like, what? Well done. <laughs> Yeah, I honestly am swelling up just you recapping it in that. I know, uh, right? I have that, that poster of Leia framed in my room that they gave us a ah, layout. Yeah, you know, I, as you do. Uh, that's so weird. I just um, I just saw mine this morning. I got like a some posters that I have to decide, like stay or go, and uh, I was flicking through them this morning. The Leia one is a stay. Oh yeah, good. Like, Whew, thank God. That's why I'm. That's why you're here, actually. I heard ah. through the force, and I was like, "I have to save this poster." No, 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 that one's very special. <laughs> but I, because I, I moved countries, you so did. I, I'm very apprehensive about owning anything now. Fair, because you know how awful it is to move. <laughs> and just, and just like I now know, I can spot knickknacks that are just going to be sitting in my drawer forever. Like I know, I know my like lifestyle and stuff. Mm -hmm. And if, if someone gives me a pin or a badge, that thing is just going in a drawer. Right. Because <laughs> uh, I'm not a pin and badge person. Like sure. it's not, it's not in my rotation. So I, um, I don't know if you ever listened to a podcast called The Sith List. It's um, Araj and his mates. They sort of cover all sort of like Star Wars, but like Comic Con-y sort of news. Sure. Right? And he tried to give me a pin one time, and I, it gave me sort of like a, like a jolty reaction. Like it made me flinch. <laughs> he, and he's like, "Oh, you really don't want this pin?" And I'm just like, "I no, 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 I can't accept knickknacks." I, 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 you, like, I'd rather you, you spent money on this. You should keep it and give it to someone else that's going to wear it. But I just moved countries and 
I just can't have any knickknacks. Can we not talk about? Let's just let it go. Let's just. just <laughs> the more I'm talking about it now, and I'm getting anxious. Uh, <laughs> I'm with you. I just moved as well, not country, but houses, and same sort of thing. I was like, I haven't even seen this in two years, so I'm probably not going to miss it. But then you have that moment where you're like, Man, I really liked it when I bought it, though. Can't, no, just just do it. Just take it away. Yeah, I, it, I, I'm of two minds because it was fun when I was. Um, cleaning stuff up to like find stuff that I just had. I was like, ah, oh, all right. Hello, old friend. <laughs> 1997, sweet purchase. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's right. I, I, I kind of like finding um, books and magazines the most. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because then, you, you you know, you got something to like sort of tuck into in a little time capsule. And sometimes it's um, quite strange to – yeah, dig up an old Star Wars Insider or something like that and and see the tiny little production, like, concept picture of the end of the Star Wars special edition. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I Dude, I have so many just, like, random magazines still. It's like, this was all the Star Wars movies up until Episode 3. It's like a, uh, like a showcase sort of thing. Like, let's look back at Star Wars. And I was like, this is such a cool magazine. But now I'm like, what am I going to do with this? Like, back in the drawer. I, I um, the ones I can't stand now, you know, like a movie comes out and every magazine company brings out their special edition. Oh like, yeah. Oh yes. Uh, <laughs> they're <laughs> just like, I, you know, my, my, our friend, um, Anthony Bresnikan did the EW one. I, I had a flick through that and it, it seemed, it seemed pretty good. It felt like he had some heart in it, but the other ones I've seen are just, it's just like copy the, paste. <laughs> yeah, like off this like off the Star Wars website, like data bank entries and stuff like that. It's just and they're like fifteen dollars or They it's, are. <laughs> it's like what? Like, I tell you the the good ones though, the Star Wars Insider do those like anthologies or oh, I don't yeah. know. Like they put together the sort of the like the thick spine uh compilations. Uh, they're pretty sweet. They are pretty sweet. Yeah, they are. That's a, it, just some just some sort of heart, you know. Just let us know the person putting this together actually likes it. That'd be nice. <laughs> hey, um, I hope the podcast started. I mean, it might have. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the trap steal. Wow, you're, you're in my world now. Okay. Yeah, I, I like it. There's no, there's no intro or it's nope. just. You- it's ease in, that's sidle the, in. That's what I like because I've always said like my show, it's not an interview, it's a conversation. And I like full heartedly believe that because with an interview, like I've had guests on before where I'm like, oh, I'd like to interview and blah, blah, blah. And when they come on, they get so nervous because like, oh, it's an interview. Like with an intro, you're like, all right, let's get ready. Here we go. And I'm talking to, and they're like, all right, let me sit up. Let me get ready. Okay. And then I've had some people that were so nervous that like I'd ask them a question. And then they would give me an answer, and that's it. And I'm like, uh, guys, come on, let's fr- let's just talk about whatever. Like that's kind of how this goes, and it leads to more, I don't know, genuine conversation. I like it. I like yeah, it. I um, well, I, for me, yeah, the best type of interview is more of a conversation. Yeah, for, it's and, the style for sure. Yeah, I'm a um, I'm an interview connoisseur. Same. Like I, I love all of it. Yeah, so it's um, yeah, I really like the, I don't know, the strategy behind it, like how to plan out your questions and know when to duck and weave and go off the, the beaten path of your plan. All, all that stuff's really interesting. Oh yeah, and then you never know what'll come up. Like they they'll say a little thing like, oh, and then I had open heart surgery, but then I went over here. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa what? You did what? Yeah, I remember um. Mike Quinn that played Neam Num. Oh yeah, great dude. Yeah, he let drop on the podcast, which I'm sure, like, you know what I mean, I'm not saying this is breaking news <laughs> from 35 years ago, but that he was um, Yoda's hand when oh, Yoda yeah. passed away, and I was just like, "What? Right. You were there for his death? What was that like? Like, was everyone bummed? Like, right? Like, was that a sad day at work?" 
But yeah. Yeah, what a monumental thing to, to bear witness to, in my mind. Right? Totally agree. Mm. And God, episode six is amazing. But so, would you, did you did you always have an interest in getting involved in media, doing freelance for a, a news network? Like, I'm sure they weren't like saw you on the street, like, hey, you want to do work for us? Um, yeah, I sort of did, but I had no idea how to do it. Sure. And some might argue I still don't. But <laughs> the I yeah, so I just had no idea how you got into that. Like, I didn't know anyone. Um, apart from musicians that were in show business, really. Mm-hmm. And then I started doing stand-up comedy. And then you meet a lot of people that are on TV that, are, that do comedy as well. And I started doing a podcast in Australia called I Love Green Guide Letters, which the Green Guide is the the... The TV guide in Australia. It's like oh. a lift out. It's like a lift out out of the newspaper, right? Mm-hmm. And it cu- comes out every Thursday. And on the fourth page every week is the letters page, where people write in their um, things they like and dislike on television. And oh. so, anyone that writes into a newspaper to express their opinion about television, <laughs> like. Something's not right. It's so <laughs> we, I, so I used to just love the what would work people up enough to write a letter. Right. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> That's next level. Because <laughs> you know how like, you get bad service and you're like, I'm going to complain about this. Yeah. But then like it's like, yeah, no, like you do Like maybe you do. I don't. I sort of just end up just like going, uh, maybe that person had a bad day at work. I don't want to get them fired or anything like that. So I just right. like, but these people cling to <laughs> – like someone wearing a, a ill-fitting tie on a newscast and they'll, they'll write in. So I thought it'd be funny just to review the letters each week. And then through that, we started getting on like people that were getting complained about. So like if there was a newsreader that was getting like complaint letters, we'd they'd come on the podcast and sort of like make fun <laughs> of the whole situation. So um, it was, yeah. Yeah, so um, I had I, I've had several guests, like big name guests in Australia, and because we used to do them at live shows, like at the comedy festival and stuff. Mm-hmm. But um, one, like probably like one of the most famous people in the country, said to me, uh, "That was very cathartic. That was that was very good for me to like to hear people make fun of the people that are writing complaint letters." Right. Like, because it's yeah, it's all sort of it's so trite, but sure. um yeah. So through that, I sort of like met people that worked in TV and stuff. And one of a person that listened to the podcast um, ended up running a TV show, and so they they sort of got me onto that because they they knew about me. So that's how I sort of got into that. Yeah, gotcha. That's awesome, actually. So you did stand up first. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right on. When did you realize you wanted to be a comic? It's a very specific thing to want, Steel. Well, I I have heard that the young I'm I'm the youngest of three children. That'll do it. And the theory is I was watching a documentary that the youngest one like is normally the funniest because <laughs> they just want to break the tension sort of thing. Sure. And it's an easy way to get noticed. So I, that, that that sort of fits um, with me. But I saw, like, I, I, like Seinfeld, the television show, mm-hmm. it, that, like, I just adore it. Like, it is the greatest thing ever. And that lifestyle portrayed of how he was, you know, just going into this, like, going downstairs, walking around the city doing spots uh, at comedy clubs, it, it seemed really cool. And I, I, I also thought, like, just being funny was the best thing. Um, like, I always, like, valued that in, in people and, and TV characters and stuff. So, um, but I didn't, like, know. I thought you sort of had to be born a comedian or something. Like, mm-hmm. I wasn't sure how, you know, it's like trying to join the circus or, like, how, or like, right. na- like NASA or something. It's like, do you have to know someone there to do that? Right. But... <laughs> you get a letter. Yeah, right. And um but Jerry Seinfeld after he finished the show, he did a world tour 
called I'm Telling You for the Last Time and brought out that um, sort of quintessential observation stand-up comedy CD um, recorded in New York. And then he made a documentary about trying to write a new hour of stand-up without using any of his old jokes. And it was called Comedian. And that documentary like changed and ruined my life. (laughs) It showed me how it works and it it sort of follows Jerry Seinfeld trying to be a stand-up comedian again, but with the weight of being so famous. So it's very hard for him to sort of, um, go under the radar. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like it's sort of a, um, like it's an advantage because as soon as you get on stage, people are instantly, like they're they're hanging on your every word, whereas you know, like a a lesser known comic has to win the crowd over and establish their character. Right. And but everyone knows Jerry Seinfeld's character as, as soon as they see him. They know the the cadence of of his jokes and all that sort of stuff. So um so he's doing that, and at the same time, there's this other comedian called Orny Adams, and he's like a you know, a touring stand up comic, and he's trying to become Jerry Seinfeld and get. <laughs> get a sitcom and, and, and go to LA and, you know, he wants to, you know, he just wants to follow that path. So it's a very interesting documentary because there's two people trying to become each other, but right? they right. both what the other person want. And it's, um, yeah, it's really interesting how, um, they both handle it. And there's heaps of cameos like Chris Rock's in it and, um, Gary Shanling and like, there's like, it, the greats. It, yeah. Um, uh, Bill Cosby's in it, which is... Um, oh, that doesn't age well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're very interesting now. Yeah. <laughs> you know. You're, uh, you're not wrong. Com- comedy's always context, so... Yep. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was a different time for the public and Bill. Yeah, um, true. But yeah, so seeing how Jerry Seinfeld failed at doing stand-up, like his jokes don't work or he gets heckled, and and the process, the repetition, and adding to it, that um, like the fact that it was hard for him. Sure. Like, oh, it's hard. Okay, so you got to work at it, sort of thing. And I sort of saw the process of how to work at it, and uh, yeah, so off I went and and tried to um, entertain crowds with riddles. Oh yeah, did you start at open mics? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I started. There was there's like a national sort of stand up competition what? for new stand ups that our um, our national youth broadcaster holds, and um, you sort of go through heats, and then it ends up at the comedy festival. Um, so that was a good way to start because the audience there are very positive. Like it's a full audience, and they're you know they know what they're getting in for, so it's um, you know pretty positive vibe. Whereas then when you go to the stand-up, like the open mics, you know, quite often you're just performing to other comics. Um, right. the, it's full, um, you know, the quality of the other comics, you know, varies. So, you know, you might go on after someone that just killed the room with like 18 horrible jokes. <laughs> um, it, it's, um, it's a bizarre subculture for sure. And it, it, it's kind of a bit like Star Wars in that, Everyone does it, especially now. Maybe oh, yeah. not previously, but like I know in Melbourne, in Australia, the open mic scene is like very diverse, and so it's it's weird that you end up becoming friends with like like sixty year old people and eighteen year old people. Right, like you're at the back, you know, of these bars, like hanging out. Like, you know, because you're backstage and you and like that ends up being, you know, a big part of your social circle of, um, you know, who you're out the back with. And yeah, so it's a lot like Star Wars in that you um, get to experience um, a lot of different people. And, you know, it's fascinating because then they get up on stage and talk about their experience. So it's, um, yeah, it's, um, it opens your eyes to a lot of stuff. Sure. It's also an it seems to be an incredibly difficult skill to master because it's not 
it, it's a a lot of co- a lot of comedians. It's like they have their specific point of view, and it's like how do you translate that out and make it funny? And then there's the whole idea that after you do an act for a while, when you have to start from scratch, like, whew, more power to you. Yeah, it's and and there's different types of comedy, and mm-hmm. there's you know like like even if you look at like Jay Leno and David Letterman, true. You know, they're, they're two. They had the exact same job, and they were both very successful. And like for me, like one of them is is near unwatchable. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> and the other one is one of the greatest gifts to entertainment um, we have known. And yeah, D- D- David Letterman is. I I, I respect him and, and love him, and. Like, like, and even the way the way he comes open with his failings, which he's had, um, I, I, his honesty, the fact that when there was a guest on the stage with him, you knew whether he liked them or not. Yeah. Like, I, I, <laughs> I, like I'd much rather that than, you know, like like Leno or Fallon, where it's everyone's their best friend. I and, agree. And the end of every sentence is hilarious. Mm-hmm. Um, I really, yeah, I liked, it's, it's kind of like, um, like Star Wars podcasting, you know, because I follow these people. I listen to like, like tons. Of, um, <laughs> I can, I can guarantee you this, that no one makes as much content and it listens to as much content as me. I agree. Like, yeah. <laughs> some some people might beat me either way. Like some people might listen to more or some people might make more. But I I I I am I'm up for challenging someone that can um that that that's doing both because I listen to so many podcasts. I just that's my like lifestyle because I work from home. Right. I um if I'm not talking to someone I'm listening to someone talk to someone pretty much. So yeah. Oh yeah. That's the point I was trying to make that I like, like following these people on the podcasts, not for like the news they break, but how they react to the news and, and to new media. So when like, like a new movie comes out, I know like I want to go listen to like blue harvest to hear what Hawes had to say about it. And then I want to listen to, um, you know, uh, like the Knights of um, Rant to see what, um, the, like, those girls thought of it and how they interpret it. And that was sort of the same with Letterman. I, I, I always want to know, oh, so, you know, Paris Hilton's coming on. How, what does he think about her? You know, how does he react to that? Um, and then you'll see, you know, like Natalie Portman or something come on and he's just like – you know, you can see the uh, how much um, he like appreciates her and stuff. Like, I like, I like the honesty. I don't like the giant grin. That's why I'm, I'm more into cats than dogs. <laughs> dogs are the Jay Leno of the pet world, <laughs> and cats are the David Letterman. I mean, <laughs> all right. <laughs> no, you, you, you I've go, never you heard go, that before. That you, means... you, go to, you go to your front door and the dog's there. Go, ah, ah, I'm so happy to see you. I'm so happy to see you. Like cats are just like, yeah, what's up? What are you going to do for me? Exactly. Huh? Cats are like, you've been gone three days. I pooped yeah. again. Fix that, yeah, please. You, you've been gone for five minutes. It's just like, it doesn't matter. It's yeah. like, <laughs> I, I, I admire the cynicism. You can't get too weighed down in cynicism, but, cynicism, but the, a, a healthy dash of it. Um, goes a long way <laughs> yeah no that makes, that makes, that makes total, can you imagine a david letterman cat i can now <laughs> it's, it's in my head he's got a, it's a bearded it's got a beard it's now the, that's right yeah. it's, it's the um the uh lost on an island david letterman that's right i mean let's be honest he can grow a respectable beard you know there's nothing worse than not being able to grow a beard and trying so you're like oh man dude okay. that guy has got like He's been hiding his wizard skills for decades. Know, yeah. <laughs> that, 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 it is crazy. It's, it is. it's like, it's ZZ Top-esque. It is. My dad has a beard like that. So I'm really? Like, I'm like, respect. Yeah, my dad's had a beard since whatever 50 years ago was. Yeah, he's always had a beard. <laughs> 
Yeah, like like he ha- he used to grow it down to like his belly button, that's, and that's dude, where that's... he would cut it. <laughs> and then as he got older, he just grabs two handfuls and then takes scissors for the excess. Wow, that's 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 half a century of bearded bliss. Yeah, I've I've not been alive for anywhere near that amount of time. And I'm like, wow, respect. So he's um his beard is older than me, yeah. is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I've just I'm at a point where the less hair on me the better. Yeah. <laughs> I, just a maintenance. Like people have their beards and they've got to like Oh, it's get, work. Get their beard dust or gel or something to floss it in this car. It's just nah. Oh, it is a it is a lifestyle. I had a beard for six months and I had like it was it was pretty decent, not gonna lie. But man, you gotta brush it and you gotta have beard oil and you gotta shampoo it and it's like, oh God. I just I don't even like having long hair. It's crazy. Yeah, I um, I used to have sort of longer hair, but I never saw myself as a long hair guy. But I think the the rest of the world did. <laughs> <laughs> Very strange, but um, yeah, now it's I just as short as not as short as possible, but just I like to be able to mold it into a little Lego man formation. Right. <laughs> if it ain't broke, you know. So Hell yeah. Some Hell yeah. things just work. So it's that's actually pretty amazing. I didn't know that Australia was like that good at uh I guess like facilitating comedy. That there's so much there and there's like a place where you can grow and learn because I feel like a lot uh, of places don't have that. Yeah, well, Melbourne, where I'm from, is the home t- to the Melbourne International Comedy Festival, and that's the third biggest comedy festival in the world. Um, the other ones are there's the Edinburgh Fringe mm-hmm. and the Montreal Just for Laughs, which is seen on TV a lot. Yep. So uh, yeah, I think having that festival, and it's like I don't know, it's the biggest the biggest ticketed event in Australia or something. It goes for like three and a half seemingly very long weeks at times where you're doing a show every night, like an hour show every night. So it's, um, wow. It's a sweet marathon. And then I, I've done like silly things like have done both my podcasts on a Saturday that go for an hour and a half each back to back. And then an hour later doing my hour show. And (laughs) how long did your voice last? I, I got through it. Oh, actually, the day I had to do that was the day before I flew to Celebration Orlando. What? So, so it was like, that's what was getting me through to it. It was like, as soon as I finished, like, this, like, the end of my of my show, mm-hmm. I'm like, and then I'm off. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm off to Star Wars Bliss. I can't wait. Oh, that's amazing. Did you, do you have any good bombing stories? You're a comic, so you definitely have some. Uh, I don't know if I've got any good ones. I've got... <laughs> You're like, actually, I've never bombed. I've got, um, oh, no, no. I, uh... <laughs> I seem, I, I had one where, well, that's not really a bombing story. It's more like just someone that's just like so belligerent, like just so drunk. Ah, uh, that does happen. That they're just talking to themselves. It was like on the, on the day of our, um, like our version of the Super Bowl. So this guy had been um, Australian Super Bowling all day and then wanted to just mumble to himself throughout my show, which was... Oh, no. And, and yeah, you have to, you know, you've, you've got this, like, hour show to do and this audience, but then you're also, like, trying to work out, calculate in your head what's the best way to handle this situation. Like, sure. you know, you've mentioned it once, you mentioned it twice. Do you just ignore it? Do you, like attempt to get the person to leave while you're talking you're still like telling jokes and telling the stories but in your head you're also like got this other thing happening out the back so it's um it can be exhausting on the brain but really fun really fun sure it's a thing but, the equal what you give the the amount of difficulty is equal to the reward at the end not always Sometimes things go unappreciated. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> fair. fair. Like sometimes um, you'll do like – like you'll be in like a big sort of like um, club venue and I, I love talking to the audience and just seeing where that goes. Sure. And sometimes that works out so well where you get to call back to something that you talked about with an audience member later on 
that everyone, you know, it gets a laugh, but in your head, it's like, you don't know how difficult that was to keep that in my head for 15 <laughs> minutes and then reference it back. Like, this is like, this is not planned. Can we all just acknowledge, please, please, please. Yeah. <laughs> after, after the meet and greet, that bit was pretty good, right? You know, the thing that I, the callback. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you can't, that, that is, um, that is a path to the dark side. You got to keep all that in your head. Keep that all in your head. You're just re- um, repeating it in the back. <laughs> yeah, there's this old um, sort of saying that, you know, one of my um, sort of more veteran stand-up comedian friends would say was, if you really want to know how well you did, as soon as you go off stage, go into a bathroom cubicle at the venue. Oh, nice, because they're talking then, about it after the show. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, there is no way I would do that to myself. <laughs> like, like live internet comments? Are you serious? I was about to say that. Tell a YouTuber, go right to your comments if you want to know how you're doing. Oh, yeah. God. That's masochism at its finest. Yeah, but I guess before YouTube and all that, you know, that was... Sure, how would you know? Yeah, that, that, that would be the ultimate challenge, but still... I couldn't do it. Yeah, nah. No, I'm let's, too let's sensitive. Still... <laughs> uh, what about if you're like in the um bathroom or in the cubicle and you stay in there but you're just like i thought he was pretty good <laughs> yeah. that would be me it. yeah, yeah <laughs> that yeah. one joke was was all right yeah. <laughs> i think you just thought of that one on the spot not bad that's right yeah <laughs> that's a comic <laughs> <laughs> oh man so you did comedy first and then you started freelancing for the network. And next thing you know, you're talking to Harrison Ford. Um, what? Uh, well, I sort of... Champion for yeah, it? Yeah, like in the lead up. Good man. Like like an hour, an hour, a year before maybe. <laughs> I, One I just I, I just said to the producer, because he knew I was a big Star Wars fan, and he's a big Star Wars fan as well. And I'm like, hey, this, um, <laughs> this Force Awakens thing is going to be pretty big. And um, I'm here for you. <laughs> I'm your guy. I would, I would love to be involved. And um, as it happens, they um, Disney Australia organized this um, just breathtakingly good, like, Star Wars festival. It was like a music festival for Star Wars at really? the – at the the steps of the Sydney Harbour Opera House, like maybe the most famous thing from Australia, definitely in the top five, mm-hmm. um, you know, at the Shell sort of Opera House in the Harbour where the Harbour Bridge is. Maybe the Harbour Bridge is more famous. But anyway, uh, it's, it's iconic. Like you can't, like that is probably the primest real estate in Australia. Sure. And they set up this giant stage for Harrison Ford to be interviewed on and then had all these like booths from like licensees and promotional partners. Like they had, you know, like prop rep, like, you know, costume replicas, you know, you could see, you know, first order stormtroopers and captain phasma and Kylo Ren, and you could play, you know, do new virtual reality things. So it was just all these little sort of like a little star Wars comic con. And they, um, you just had to apply for tickets and really? yeah, so I think there was like two thousand tickets or something, and they were free, but wow. you just had to you just had to get them, and I guess you know they couldn't have, you know, because it could bottleneck to you know if like five thousand people came it would get you know horrible, right. so they sort of kept it so it wasn't like I never felt like I felt like it was full, but I had ease of movement. Do you know right. what I mean? So they, they did it really well. And so you had like a couple of hours first just to, um, you know, go through all the exhibits and, and get your photo taken and all, all that sort of stuff and, and sort of mingle with other Star Wars fans. And there was tons of costume people. And then they had the red carpet where Harrison came out and he like, like signed tons of people's stuff. Like he, 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 signed, like he signed for, a long time and wow i i would imagine more people got their stuff signed than didn't sort of thing <laughs> what then in the history of harrison ford signing probably yeah right wow. and and then so um and then he did an interview on the stage with um 
Oh my God, I'm blanking. Captain Typho, Jay Lugai, yes. Jay Lugai, mm-hmm. who's um, a Sydney-based actor and who was Captain Typho in um... episode two. Yeah, is he, is he is he in Revenge of the Sith as well? Yes, he is. He's at yes, the funeral. Yeah. Um, bummer. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so he got to interview him on stage. And so that was in Sydney. And so when this thing came out, like I got like someone like messaged me or I got an email or something, but sort of in the online Star Wars, like fandom in Australia, like word quickly spread. And so um, I'm straight on the phone to Channel 10 to speak to the producer. And he's like, yep, yeah, already on it. And uh <laughs> we'll get you up for that. And so, yeah, I flew up the night before and my friends that do a podcast called Hey Fam, which is sort of like a pop culture podcast, really funny, like sort of quite, um, I don't know, hip. I don't know. They're into like, like music and they, they know about stuff. Sure. They, <laughs> That's the tagline of their show. Actually. We yeah, know about stuff. I don't know. They're like, they're just across music. One of them's a DJ, and it's uh, like anyway. It. But um, yeah, they were having a trivia night, a Star Wars trivia night. So we went to that that night, and it was just so rad. How like this was peak Star Wars fever. Oh yeah, like you know I mean, like a week before the Force Awakens or something, and like people were just like frothing, and so. We uh, did that the night before, and then the next morning, I got to go into the studio, and I met BB-8, who was doing a guest appearance on the show what? that morning. Um, that was amazing. And then I went – oh, we went to a screening of, like, eight minutes of The Force Awakens. Dude. Uh, at IMAX. It was, like, a special, like, press – and like I, I think if you're a fan, you could go into a lottery or something. But they showed from Finn drinking the water on Jakku mm-hmm. to the Falcon flying into space. Nice. And <laughs> it was so bizarre just to get dropped into a Star Wars film, oh, and you're just yeah. like. Like trying to remember everything that ha- is happening, but then and then you're trying to put it into context. And they talk about Poe Dameron dying in that scene, right? With no context or even for who the characters are either, because you're just yeah, being well, introduced. Well, we knew who, like as a Star Wars fan, you know, we knew who Poe Dameron was. Oh yeah, but, yeah. Then, but then I'm finding out he's dead. Right. <laughs> you what? Just kind of looking yeah. around. <laughs> Which sort of worked out from the trailers that he can't have been dead. Sure. Like, of like the space battle footage and, and, and stuff like that. But, um, and then Harrison Ford came out and asked us all to keep what we saw secret, which was. Dude. Pretty good. <laughs> and, 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 and the gladiator, Russell Crowe, was in the audience with his what? kids. <laughs> Dude. Another Australian treasure. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. <laughs> um, True. Yeah, so... so yeah, so talk, then... talked to him after this. Yeah, wow. yeah. So I didn't even know that I was going to get to interview him. So they... Because they sort of said they he wasn't going to do red carpet interviews. So I had to go interview... Like, we did a bunch of stuff with fans, like, as a backup. Mm-hmm. And... Which was really fun. And like, you know, like I remember there was like a family and they were all dressed as like, um, like rebel commandos on, um, on Endor, like a whole family oh, and stuff, which is really thick. Just like cool stuff like that. And then, so, but I said to the crew, I'm like, Hey, if there's a, like, if we've got a spot on the red carpet, like, cause you know, an allocated spot, mm-hmm. like they're standing there, like. I believe I'm going to talk to Harrison Ford today. Like, guys, come on. And they're like, all right, all right, we're with you, we're with you. And then so I'm waiting there and the Disney rep comes up to me and says, uh, Steele, would you like uh, a couple minutes with Mr. Ford? <laughs> Don't cry. Don't cry. And I was like, 
Yes. Yes, I would. <laughs> just straight, like, Terminator response. Like, no, because I was so excited that I had to, like, shut it all down. Oh, to yes. Not, to not just go, ah, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> You mean Han Solo? You mean Han Solo? <laughs> Yeah, right. And then, um, yeah, so then when he came up and he's, like, doing the other interviews with proper people, that, <laughs> um, no, like, it was, it was, like, there was, like, like everyone else before me were famous, like, reporter people. It was very strange. Sure. But, uh, <laughs> and I was, like, like, I'd done all this stuff before and I'd, you know, done television stuff, I'd interviewed people, but I... I I actually wasn't sure how my body would react to talking to Harrison Ford, like on a, Fair. a, a nerve, le- like just on my nervous system. Oh yeah. So I was sort of like, like him and I reckon Jerry Seinfeld are the people that I like the most that I'd be the most intimidated to talk to because they've got reputations. Oh yeah. <laughs> a- and so I had on, I'm not sure if you've ever seen this t-shirt I made. It was, um, oh, yeah. the Luke's. I've seen the, the interview. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. So yeah, the Luke Skywalker. So I made this t-shirt that's sort of like an old, it's like a, a reference of an old skateboarding t-shirt from the eighties called this, from this movie that Tony Hawk was in search for animal chin. And it's like a milk carton lost child like thing, but yep. it's Luke Skywalker, Jedi master. And it says, have, has, have you seen him? And as he came up, so I've got my two questions because you've got this limited time. Mm-hmm. So, so I was sort of like, all right, I got my questions, like, and I was sort of like, this guy's done interviews all day. Any questions that he hasn't heard um, all day, and it also needs to be for like this um, morning TV market. So it can't be like too nerdy. I need some like something that they can relate to, and because I always like when I do um, like mainstream stuff for Star Wars, like on the radio and that, is sort of equate, like, for a Star Wars nerd, this is the World Series, or this is the Super Bowl. Right. Like, it's, like, how excited you get about that, we just get excited about the lightsaber fight. Right. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. And then and people sort of go, oh, okay, cool, yeah, okay. So, you know, you can sort of, like, relate to how, you know, as, as I have to do for them. Do you right. know what I mean? Absolutely. I have to say, these two teams, they're like... They're like real life fake Jedi and they're all fighting and will it be the battle droids or the, um, the Gungans that are going to win? That, maybe that will get me into gridiron if I pretended right? one yeah. side. Was... <laughs> that is interesting. All That's, right. We've just uncovered something. Yeah. <laughs> this is our end to sports deal. <laughs> mm. but as, so as Harrison Ford came up, I've got these questions and I've got like, like I've got them loaded in my head. Mm hmm ready to shoot but then he looks at my t-shirt and points at it and starts laughing <gasps> so my plan is ru- like i'm just like what do, I do? <laughs> what do i say i made this but then i'm like i have to like this segment is one take like so i can't right <laughs> like i can't i can't talk about the t-shirt and then go all right let's reset for tv so i just had to ignore it and just go just go a question just go a question just go a question and yeah he he was like the, you can watch the video on YouTube and stuff, but he, like, you know, like you know that whole thing about don't meet your heroes. Oh yes, and yeah, meet him on a good day. <laughs> like if you if you get your hero on a good day, um, you'll still be talking about it on podcasts four years later. <laughs> That's right. That's right, dude. It was great, and he gave you a little wedding advice. I said, I've yeah, see, I've seen yeah. it. I've seen it. <laughs> I always like when people that like are the big fans of these things get those sort of opportunities because it's like, yeah, one of us made it. You know what I mean? As opposed to someone who doesn't really care about the thing they're covering, it just yeah. adds that level to it. I well, it. that's like um like Clayton that works for oh, NBC. Clayton's amazing. He's been on the show before. Yeah, so he's like just a, you know, just a fan. Like you know, he's not into it, like because it sort of helps him get to talk about it. Like he's. Like, like in it. Do you know oh, what yeah. I mean? Oh, yeah. We, when he was on, we talked about his documentary he did with uh, the sound documentary for episode eight. Ah, oh, nice. And yeah, he yeah. was talking about how he was just like running around geeking out at Skywalker Ranch. He's like, there's this, and then there's this. <laughs> Amazing. Like, it's great. The um, It was so funny because we'd never met in person. 
uh, we were just like Twitter friends. Mm -hmm. And then he's doing interviews at the solo premiere on the red carpet. And how it works is there's that big tunnel, right, the marquee tunnel, and the red carpet's in the middle. And then there's like a railing for the press. Mm-hmm. And then, and then there's like the stars or special guests are in the middle and then there's another railing or roped off bit. And that's for just like regular guests that aren't doing press interviews. Oh, so okay. podcasters, right? right. <laughs> and so I'm walking with my wife and we're just glowing. Like this is a dream come true. Oh yeah. And, and Clayton is like ready to do his interview. So he's in over on the other side of the red carpet with his camera crew and his microphone. And he calls out to me oh. and, and Jackie thought it was the press hitting me up for an interview. Like she was really <laughs> impressed. <laughs> she was like, Oh, you've been spotted That's right. like, by a reporter. Well done. <laughs> and I was like, nah, just one of my nerd friends from Twitter. Shut <laughs> up. Oh, it's like, it's a good job though. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that was sort of like when I started the po- I started the podcast when, um, just after the Disney sale or the sale to Disney, mm-hmm. because I used to listen to like news podcasts, pretty much that's it. I know I used to listen to collecting podcasts nice. and news podcasts and I'd sort of at that point, the, the main collecting one I listened to for a long time and still do, but they don't come out that often is the Star Wars action news. Mm-hmm. And around Attack of the Clones, I just, I just like lost it with the line. Like I'd bought, I'd purchased everything. <laughs> and then when those figures came out and I was, I sort of like, I just wasn't getting the thrill of buying them anymore. And I'm kind of like OCD, so I need everything or nothing. Same. And so I just went, all right, I'm out. I'm just going to collect all the vintage stuff. I'm going to sell all this stuff, and I'm just going to get the vintage stuff because I know they're not going to make more of it. Because like, I, was, I was getting sick of like all the Tatooine Lukes, to be honest. Right. Because <laughs> at that time, they brought out one, and it was a sick figure. I, I, I do have to say, the one with the Gilligan hat. Oh, yeah. And I may have came with the Treadwell droid. I'm not sure. But it was like it was like the one they should have brought out first instead sure. of bringing out three versions before getting to this, like, really good version. But it just reminded me of that Simpsons episode with Malibu Stacy with Waylon Smithers going, but he's got a new hat. <laughs> and I felt like I'm like, oh, it's, it's the same Luke I bought, but it's got a new hat. And then I was just like... <laughs> Nah, this is too real. I'm not living in a Simpsons episode. So, um, yeah, I bailed them and then just went back and, and got all the the vintage stuff, which at the time, it seemed expensive for the time. Mm-hmm. But, wow, it's expensive now. Oh, yeah. For I, sure. get sh- I get shocked when I listen to podcasts and people are talking about, you know, they got a, I don't know, like a squid face with a weapon and how much it goes for. It's like, What? That is, wow! I, oh, yeah. I, I I had no idea these these figures have gone up so much since since like the Force Awakens. But I I would always buy them in bulk. Like I would always get the lot of ah, stuff. Ah, smart. And work out what I needed and like compare figures. Like, oh, is this Bib Fortuna face as good as the one I've already got? And then I just separate them and sell them. And that was like an easier way to like get figures rather like if you just buy like one power of the force figure Uh and you do that five times or you buy five in a lot, like it, it always works out cheaper. Absolutely. Sell your extras. Exactly. Exactly. And collecting is never going to go away. So things rarely depreciate. (laughs) Or just put them in a box and go, I'm going to put them on eBay one one day. I, I, yeah. Either or. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to judge either decision. I'm not going to judge <laughs> either decision. That's right. They're yours until they're not. Respect. <laughs> yes. yes. That's amazing. So you started Steel Wars around the time of the Disney purchase. Why? Why? What caused you to do that? Because you listen to shows and you're like, I could take a crack at this. I'm, I, I like Star Wars. No. Right? I actually didn't think I could take a crack at it because really? I thought the sh- I thought the shows that I listened to were pretty comprehensive. Sure. So I was sort of like, what? Like, I don't have any... I, I sort of... I didn't get the point of a Star Wars podcast at the time to which 
I now very like my understanding is of it is how I was saying before, it's not the news you're breaking. It's how you react to the news. Sure. And, and, and want to know that like John, I mean, people don't listen to your podcast to find out that the clone wars have been saved. They already right. know that <laughs> they want to find out what you think about it. And I, I didn't grasp that side of it um, for a long time. So I was I was super into the Mark Maron, the WTF podcast, oh, where yeah. he, he interviews people and sort of goes into these deep dive interviews and at the same time shares a lot about himself. Yep. And I sort of thought if I started interviewing people, because I already knew a lot of interesting people just from the other podcast and, you know, comedians are always fun to talk to. And then I knew sort of like musicians and, and people in the media that, that are into Star Wars, um, that we could sort of go into sort of a deep dive about their life in Star Wars and how it like relates to their life and that sort of stuff. Sure. And, and sort of get more people's personal stories um, that are their own, do you know what I mean? And then, and then, and and people actually like it when they hear a personal story that does sound like their own. Absolutely, like, it's fascinating to hear that someone, um, like 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 Jason Ward from Making Star Wars, he, he's like about the same age as me, and we grew up on the other side of the planet, right? And and we only met like three years ago, but because we had like a very similar upbringing influenced by the same media. Mm -hmm. Like we click straight away. Do you sure. know what I mean? Like, cause we've had these shared experiences that we didn't know were shared experiences and you know, Oh, what did, what was your first, like, like when you got the Phantom Menace toys, what was that night like for you? Oh, here's how they did it at my place. And like, like those sort of things of like, we were all experiencing these same events and it, it's funny to sort of follow these like Star Wars fans at how they interpreted them. And then it's like even funnier when it's like me and you and our, our paths cross as we're actually taking in those events. Like you can um, like listen to my podcast of the um, celebration at Orlando oh, and did. he, <laughs> he and he, you get mentioned. Oh, are you on the podcast? Uh, or do I just you were next to us recording a bunch, but yeah. but we were mentioned. I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but that's like it's so sick. Like I um like I know when I got into hip hop in the nineties, and you know it was sort of pre you know internet, and you can get you know you had to sort of find out stuff, and you know in some ways it's like you know way better now because the information's for everyone. But it was like a fun challenge and to like investigate stuff yourself. And in um, those nineties hip hop albums, you know, you get like the Dr. Dre album and then like Snoop Dogg would guest on it. So you're like, Oh, I'm going to go check out like Snoop Dogg. Oh, yeah. And then, and then they might rap about the same person they both like don't like and stuff. And then you check out there. Like it's, um, it was this way, like this network, this family tree. And I, I think that's really similar with like podcasting and, and a, like definitely in comedy podcasting and in Star Wars podcasting, you know, listeners can follow different podcasts and see like, like it's a, it's a shared universe. That's what I'm trying to say. It's, sure. it's the, Star Wars podcastic universe. It's true. And it's also really cool. That's something that is that I really like about Celebration is we're all there for the same thing. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. you like Star Wars? So do I. So you're already like the ice is broken because you love the same thing. And then you can connect as people via the shared interest. Yeah. Well, we just had at, um, at Comic-Con, I'm actually just editing that episode today, but we organized like a podcaster meetup, a podcaster and listener meetup. So anyone that was a Star Wars podcaster or YouTuber or, you know, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And if you're a listener or a fan um, of Star Wars, then, yeah, we all just met at this bar on the Saturday night at Comic-Con. And it was the best. Like, I... Like, I'm, I'm still on a high from how cool it was that... Like I would, someone would go, oh, I'm, you know, um, Boba Fett's Revenge on Twitter. Hey, what's going on, man? Yeah, what, you know, like, 
it was like all these people that are connected from the internet, like interweaving and, and meeting the people that listen to them or podcasts that, you know, podcasts I listen to, I got to meet people there. And then like fans that listen to separate podcasts are like, they're like talking about style. Like, do you know what I mean? It's just all interweaving. And, you know, there was people from like Lucasfilm came and, and voice actors and like, um, like crew from Delray and stuff. So it was just a cool, like mingling and there was no like hierarchy. There was no one behind a desk or lining up for stuff. It was just like, like Star Wars fans chilling, and yeah, it was it was really sweet. That's so cool. And then you got to see a bird attack a drone, so you know there's entertainment too, dude. <laughs> that was <laughs> I, I'm I'm so happy that there are things like that that I haven't experienced that are <laughs> out there on the planet to thrill me. <laughs> It was like this drone above the party was getting swooped by these seagulls. <laughs> and wait till you hear this audio. It's people are like someone, someone says, um, this is my, like you can hear like people cheering the swooping and gasping. And then you hear someone go, this is my whole H. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> You know, the, 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 where the biggest Comic-Con announcements take place. And then you hear Brian Young going, this is way better than Hall H. <laughs> but, um, That's yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And, 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 and thankfully, no one was injured in that. Um, the birds just seemed to want to... They couldn't understand why they couldn't intimidate this bizarre thing. <laughs> that thing came to the wrong neighborhood is what happened. <laughs> yeah, the, the birds were gatekeeping. That's right. <laughs> They were checking for yeah. the drone's badge. Yeah, well, see, down below, I didn't even think about this um, this yin and yang um, synergy. But, yeah, down below at the bar, it's, like, all-inclusive. Everyone's welcome. And then up there in the air, it's just gatekeeping. So two <laughs> sides of fandom represented, um, one physically, one metaphorically. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's beautiful. It is. It is. Sometimes life just makes sense. So how, how, how did you decide on your format? Like for your show. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so the Mark Marin, that was it. Smart. Smart. Like I, I was just like I, I loved the way like I've I've um like I've known Mark for ages and we've done like stand up together. Like I'm not like whenever I've done a gig with Mark Marin, like I'm lucky, John. I so sure. I just wanna assume that like yeah, it's not like <laughs> You're not where, texting him like, as we speak. <laughs> yes. No, no, but that, like that's after. I, I'm just not on his level or so, like I'm not anywhere. So I've, I've been lucky enough to be on some shows with him and, and just through, he came on my other podcast. He was on, I love gringo letters, which was oh, awesome. right on. Yeah. So, um, I got to see where the, um, Obama sat in his garage. What? Yeah. Dude. So, um, that, that was, that was really cool. But, um, yeah, so I loved his interviewing style. I, I like the way he injected his, his life into it as well. And I, I figured that if I could find these people to have conversations with, then over the episodes, I could talk about my stories and then other people could talk about theirs and we'd just see where it goes. And it sort of, yeah, unlocked this world I, I wasn't sort of, um, yeah, I, I, I didn't think in four years time I'd be in an apartment in LA, like talking to someone about it on the internet. Right. <laughs> um, but I, I, I am known for diving headfirst into things. So it it's not surprising. Um, yeah, I have a, a habit of that. Um, which has led to me having all these diverse, separate lives. Right. Which sometimes people are surprised that other the other lives existed. Um, I have I actually have people go, oh, I didn't know you're into Star Wars. I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Steel from from Channel Ten, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I also do like streetwear stuff. Like I, I co-own like a sneaker store in Melbourne. That all and- makes sense now. Yeah, so we do like you know hard to get Nikes and like like brands like Stussy and and our own like sort of product what? Line stuff. 
yeah so that's sort of what influences when i design those t-shirts for steel wars it's sort of I, I try to design them for that sort of more streetwear aesthetic sure um, that it sort of maybe it doesn't look like you're wearing a star wars t-shirt but if you're into Star Wars, you know it's a Star Wars T-shirt. That's my favorite sort of same, like like quote. a like a reference as opposed to a straight up logo. Yeah, like something that sort of blends in with the clothing I would wear if it didn't say Star Wars on it. Right. But then, um, I, I, yeah, if people get the reference, or or quite often the double reference, because I normally like to have like a Star Wars reference and then. It's also something from somewhere else, like it's like a like a skateboard brand reference or a streetwear brand reference, or or like the Your Snoke Theory sucks yeah, one, with yeah. <laughs> like the, the the Kenner font. Um, yeah, the the Kenner font like made that sticker because I had it like um, you know just as different fonts uh-huh. and. You know, like the Star Jedi font, which is like the Star Wars font, which mm-hmm. is is good for some letters, bad for other letters. Um, and then I had the font. I can't remember what it's called, but it's the it's the font that the Force Awakens is written in, in oh, between nice. Star and Wars. You know that, so it's sort of like a bit gothicy. Oh yeah, yeah. So I've, I had it in that font, and then I was like, eh, it's just not. I need something more. What's something? And then, yeah, when I thought, oh, the, like, the Ken- like people love the Kenner font. And what I like about it is if you don't even know that it's a Kenner font, like, true, it, it, it looks cool. It, it looks does. Cool. It does. I, I, I love people that have, like, a, a mind for marketing because I do not. I'm terrible at it. So when I see people like your Snoke Theory sucks and Ignite the Green – and these things that like you can rally behind, and now it makes total sense because you have the streetwear thing, so your brain is wired that way. Like I think about Black Series Rebels with their pins. It's a pin, yeah. but also a calling card. Like it just is genius. I like it a lot. Yeah, well, the the your Snoke theory sucks thing came up because I was going to Celebration London, but at that point, like having a Star Wars podcast wasn't special. Right? Like, do you know what I mean? Like. Here's Star Wars. Like, do you know what I mean? If it was, say, seven years ago, eight years ago, mm-hmm. if you were at a convention and someone gave you a flyer and said this is for a Star Wars podcast, you'd be like, oh, really? Right. Because, <laughs> there, you know, there wasn't that many. And now, you know, like when they did those, um, the awards, uh, there was like, was there like 300 or something? A lot. Um, and I'm sure there's way more now. Um, and, and like, that's like sick. And oh, yeah. I, I encourage anyone that wants to to make one, if like if if you the actual making of it is going to be enjoyable and it's a fun social activity. Do you know what I mean? To do in groups and oh, stuff. Oh yeah, for sure. But um, yeah. So I was like, because I'd done like a lot of self promotion because what what you have to do at the comedy festivals, and the 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 like the classic way like on the day of the shows because you know people come into the city and they might have tickets for a show but there's shows every hour so then they might go see another show on a whim or they might just go to the ticket box um we're just going to go see comedy so what a lot of people do is like there's this area at the town hall and where the chalkboard is with all the shows and people you know they hand out flyers for their show and they sort of say hey my show's about this it's about you know ah, I'm, it's, all right. it's about, like this one's about being like i'm a new mum and this is how i'm dealing with it or um one of my friends became he's like one of the best comics in australia lawrence mooney one year for his show he learned how to become a taxi driver <laughs> and like did the course and became a taxi driver and wrote a show about that experience Dude. so so, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, so you're handing out flyers saying, because it's not like I, my show is just an hour of random jokes. It's about, like, I've done one about growing up in my little small town sort of thing. Like, my, it's, mm-hmm. I, I never even thought about it like that. I wrote my own American graffiti. That is, I've hey. never. Hey. What? Oh, my God. Dude. Wow. I never even looked at it like that, that I wrote my own American graffiti. 
You did? That's, I'm placing high praise on myself, but it's my attempt. I mean, my... Modesto, Melbourne. I mean, I can see it. You know, I know. Start with no, that. no I, I grew up in Rosebud, which is... Um, oh, I take it back. It's not American it's... Graffiti anymore, Steel. Well, no. Well, <laughs> Melbourne, no, Melbourne would be San Francisco, and Modesto would be Rosebud. Yes. Okay. Got it. Dude. Dude. So, but I never even thought that that's exactly... Oh. Because I see a lot of other references. I love films that... Um, the One Night Adventure. Oh, yeah. You Same. Know, like, you know, Ferris Bueller, which is at daytime, but like, um, like Go... Remember Go? Oh yeah. Um, with um Doug Allen, did he write that? Doug Leenham, who now does massive films. <laughs> um, the yeah, like I love those sort of like like even like risky business and like just those teenagers getting in trouble sort of movies. Oh yeah. But yeah, I never thought about the American Graffiti thing. That is, but it's so. Like it was such an influence writing the show, but I, it, I wasn't conscious of it because now I'm thinking about it and it's all, yes, wow, it's I now, really. Your um, act is now Australian graffiti. Yeah, ah, exclusive. Wow, <laughs> wow, you renamed it. You renamed <laughs> it. I just called it Rosebud after the town, but um, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> God, we are, we are excellent at getting off track. Yeah, that's but, my show, man. <laughs> That is um that's a proper podcast. I admire that. Thank you. So um but so yeah, so you hand out these flyers every night. And of course, if you can get one in twenty people to come to your show, it's a very good hit rate. Right? Oh yeah, for sure. So, so you end up seeing a lot of flyers on the ground, which which is sad. You should put them in the bin because when the person that gave them to you see them on the ground, it hurts your feelings. And they have to throw it away. So you're like, oh man. <laughs> yeah, because it is sort of like I don't know, it's sort of a diss to yeah. see. It's like, yeah, even like I, I see my friends um, like CDs in like used CD stores and I'm like, oh, how, how are they going to take this? Like, but <laughs> it's a cycle of life. Anyway, so um, I couldn't deal, my ego couldn't deal with seeing my flyers on the ground for all of Star Wars Celebration. Fair. And I thought that maybe the organizers might get annoyed at that also. Do you know what I mean? Also fair. So I figured that if I made it, what's the cheapest way to make something that someone wants that will remind them of the podcast? And because like I grew up in skateboarding and streetwear, like stickers are huge to like skateboarding culture. And so I was like, well, if I can make a sticker that doesn't really have anything to sort of gives people the the vibe of the show. Um, and then in small text, it just promotes the show. So I thought like we, I'd, I'd always talk about on the show about like the silly theories and like, you know, the Snoke is Tarkin. The Snoke is, this was, this was pre Snoke was Ezra. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, we didn't know about Ezra, but um, so I just thought your Snoke theory sucks was like if you were in Star Wars fandom following online, you instantly knew what that meant. Right. And it, it, and it was like a shared experience with the sticker. And that that's why people loved it because it was verbalizing like so succinctly what so many fans thought in a fun way. And I was actually shocked that it ever – like people take it the wrong way and think like it's an insult or that Ryan Johnson shouldn't have had a photo with it because it's insulting fans theories or Pablo. And it's like, I wrote the joke or if you can call <laughs> like, like if you can call it a joke, but I wrote it and it's intent and, 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 and people can take jokes at the wrong intent but I, I, I really think it's a stretch to take this one. The mm -hmm. joke was, we're all idiots. Right, yeah. <laughs> I'm an idiot. You're an idiot. They're an idiot. Do you want a sticker? We're all celebrating how silly we are. Right. That's like, it's a celebration of our silliness. And that's it. And it's not like... Like... Like I, I remember the first time I saw The Force Awakens, and in the first few seconds of seeing Snoke, I thought it was a Yoda. I thought it was a holographic Yoda. Oh. Not, not, not Yoda himself. Right. But 
same creature, uh, like a giant hologram. And then I saw the ears and I'm like, no. And <laughs> so my Snoke theory sucked. And, <laughs> and part of the joke to me that's funny is even before I've heard your Snoke theory, it sucks. Right. Like, <laughs> so it's not discriminate. I'm not saying that you, Brian, that your Snoke theory sucks. I'm just saying it's like the fact that you have one, it sucks. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like that is the nature of a Snoke theory that yeah. it inherently sucks. <laughs> and it could be the right one, but like there's, where's the fun in that? Right, but, exactly. Then it's not a theory and you can leave. Yeah. <laughs> You're not playing the same game. <laughs> so that's how the, the sticker came just out of that like need to not see my flies on the ground. And then when I got the font right and my friend, um, Leighton helped me out with it Um, because I'd sort of done the whole font, but the squiggly Y Mm. is really hard. Like that Kenna swirl. Oh, yeah. That that is that takes um, a bit of uh, extra illustrator skills that I did not have um, (laughs) on my Mac. So, um, yeah, and it worked. People liked it. It definitely (laughs) worked. And then you even made like little lollipops with it on. And that's going the extra mile. I appreciate that. I made that for Celebration Orlando because I thought it's an extra sweet pun to be able to suck on your sucky Snoke theory. <laughs> and I actually did it out of spite. Did because, you? <laughs> yeah. So, like, because some people thought it was um, being mean. And there was all these, you know, people wrote blog posts. Actually, one person that wrote a blog post about it, about how it's, like, like it's being mean to Star Wars fans, Mm -hmm. they actually went crazy after The Last Jedi came out. Oh, boy. Like they went into full down with Lucasfilm. Yeesh. One of those spiraled out. They totally flipped. So I actually, it's so strange because some people, like, you know, I don't don't remember who's who in all these things, Like, like people that comment, but I actually had someone contact me and say, oh, hey, I was sort of, like, I read that blog post about the Snoke Theory Sucks, and I sort of sided with that and gave you some grief. And seeing what happened to that guy that wrote it made me reevaluate it. And with and they were sort of like, I'm just writing to say, um, yeah, I'm sorry, I sort of misjudged you and stuff. Yeah, so it was, it was really strange. But, yeah, that person went, like, like full anti the last jedi like full boycott yeah. so um yeah the um but yeah so i made the the lollipop because another person cuz like when people like i do someone else's podcast like i sort of try not to talk about it but mm-hmm. like now cuz i felt like i've i haven't talked about it for ages i feel like but i probably have but <laughs> this is this is just where the conversation went mm-hmm. but with you but um like this guy would be just like, why are you always, you know, let it go, you know, come up with something new. And I'm like, well, they asked me about it. So right. it's <laughs> just don't listen, just don't listen to when I'm on shows. And then like, if you listen to the same person, all these different shows, they're going to end up telling the same stories. True. But he was like, like sort of like always adding me on Twitter about it. It's before I learned about muting. Muting is the best. Oh yeah. Especially now. And and so he's like going, It's not funny, no one finds it funny. So I was like, Okay, well challenge accepted. <laughs> as a as a comedian, as you do. Yeah. Yeah, and as an idiot. Um <laughs> So I yeah I, I I had to find the perfect right colored lollipops to get them printed on and then hand them all out at celebration and um I got like a like Ryan Johnson like uh, got a photo with one and oh, yeah. and people just enjoyed um sucking them uh, <laughs> uh, I, appre- I appreciate the double down it's like it was already a good joke but then the pun just sends it home. Yeah, and it was a good treat. People, it was also like if you're at a convention, who doesn't want a lollipop? It's true. I enjoyed well, mine. The, oh, <laughs> see, that's the thing. When anyone ate it, I got offended. But like, you should be keeping that. That should be going in your cabinet, buddy. <laughs> oh, it was gone. It was gone before the end of the day. <laughs> well, actually, on my on my shelf above um, where I'm doing this, I've got the Funko Pop Gold Robe Snoke. The- Snoke. Nice. And he's as a staff, I've made him. He's holding one of the lollipops. 
<laughs> so he, he, he sort of like the scale, it looks like one of those construction workers that's holding a stop sign. Right. It's like... <laughs> the Snoke theories stop here. Yeah, Which... yes. <laughs> oh, but, I'm into uh, it. But yeah, I love... Um... Like, it's quite thrilling to, like, make something like that, that it's, it's like this bizarre saying. Like, like people say it that don't know about the sticker or me or anything. So it's, um, yeah, like the comedian side of me, the fact that it's like this little, like, verbal meme or whatever. I, um, yeah, I, I think that's really cool. I, I um, like, because I, you know, growing up, like in Australia, like I didn't think it was possible to affect Star Wars or interact with Star Wars, like in a like a real meaningful way. Oh yeah, uh, it it definitely seemed like Tatooine, like looking over the twins. I I very much relate to that Luke Skywalker scene, and um, like, uh, do you know the artist Hugh Fleming? Yeah, oh yeah. A, so he did um in Insider. He used to do like a. A, a painting a issue it seemed that would be uh, to do with a story and he did the star wars rocks poster yep that, with the that, guitars yeah with the band and princess leia is singing and and there's a sweet easter egg princess leia is singing to hugh fleming in the front row which is oh, pretty what? i didn't know that yeah if you look closely it's it's hugh's the one sort of screaming back at her so i, awesome. I love that it's so weird because I go into like Target here in America and I still see it on like wallets and stuff. Like they still, <laughs> and I just send it to him. So anyway, so Hugh Fleming grew up in the same, around the same city that I did in mm-hmm. Melbourne. And so he was involved in like the Star Wars conventions in Australia in the nineties. And I was just like, a, like a nerd going by myself. I didn't know anyone. So I just walk around by myself and, and sort of just sort of, kind of try to meet people or just take it in. Sure. Just wanted to like hear every panel. And I just wanted to like, it was so amazing to have so much Star Wars-ness, um, you know, cause like really like pretty pre-internet and yeah, it was just thrilling to be around. So I was sort of like as stoked to be in the panel by myself than with four people. It is, I, now that I go to panels with people, it is much more enriching, but sure. at the time, I was just like, Bob, like Jeremy Bullock's talking about the first time he put on the armor. This is like, like mesmerizing yeah. like information. And um, yeah, so Hugh would go cause he was a Star Wars artist and he would do panels and stuff. And I just, like, I was just like, like I could barely even go to talk to him cause I was just that dude paints official star wars stuff yeah he's been to skywalker ranch it's it's like amazing and then he did he did all the phantom menace dark horse covers which you know when you think about comic issues like i that it could like those could be the best-selling Star Wars comics of all time. Maybe the new Star Wars, the Marvel reboot, mm-hmm. but man, they moved a lot of those Phantom Menace comics back in the day. Like big piles at the comic stores of those. Oh yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, I always thought, uh, why did I bring up Hugh again? I'm drifting. That's a good question. I'm so into your story, I don't remember. <laughs> I'm like, man, yeah, Jeremy, that's crazy. Jeremy Bullock talking about you've been, go- you've enthralled me. I'm going backwards through the stories we're telling. Yeah. <laughs> uh, see, Snoke theories podcast. I, I guess I, I guess I, I yeah I actually I've got it now. I was just so Thank amazed. God one of us does. <laughs> I was so amazed that he could affect Star Wars. That's what it was. He lived in Melbourne, and it just seemed like a superpower. Right. Um, like, you know, now it's like, you know, people can, you know, work their way to, you know, writing a blog on starwars.com and, and all that stuff. It seems like, or even just making a podcast, it, it seemed like uh, impossible back then. So yeah, the fact that, um, the silly sticker, um, that just that saying, like, like it's such a dumb, trivial thing. Right. <laughs> 
But for someone that thought it was impossible, like I, I do sort of go, wow, that's, that's like, you're cool. right. I mean, that's like the, when, the power of marketing though. You know, if you hit the right note, it resounds, you know? Yeah. Well, it's what sort of started my friendship with um, Mark at Funko was because when they were promoting the San Diego Comic Con exclusive holographic Snoke oh. last year, <laughs> they were using that hashtag. Like they were using the saying in their mark, like in their tweets, which mm-hmm. it's, it, again, this is totally dumb, trivial stuff, right? But it's also like I remember like making the stupid sticker at like three in the morning in Australia and just like had no idea that it would, um, you know, it would lead to that. Sure. And, and in that, I'm not sure if you've seen that video of Jimmy Kimmel when Jimmy Kimmel. Oh, yes. Like, like talk to me about it on national television, which oh, yes. is ridiculous. That is <laughs> bizarre. It's gold. like so much, so much so that I've read conspiracy theories that I'm a Lucasfilm fan plant. <laughs> which I mean, is, please let this be true. I know you're like, if it isn't true now, how can I make it true? Right? Yeah. <laughs> Sign me up to be the official Lucasfilm plant. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, um, well, he's got this video interviewing Kathleen Kennedy, and then he just happens to be picked <laughs> out of the crowd in Jimmy Kimmel. And I swear to God, that was all just amazing happenstance. And the fact that I had a very easy to read t shirt, yeah. <laughs> and I was sitting next to Laura Syracuse, who was dressed as Rose Tico. Oh, yeah. And I actually thought, because I sort of, you know, I know the way, like, you know, when the the host at a talk show, they're talking to the audience, they very rarely go to the next person. Right. But then the T-shirt just caught his eye and he had to know about it. Right. And that, <laughs> but yeah, it like after that happened. So yeah, so the, he called out the T-shirt on national television on The Force Awakens. No, on The Last Jedi episode of Jimmy Kimmel. Yep. And you can watch it on my YouTube. But after the whole taping... Um, I rang my wife and just said, uh, she's like, how's the taping? And I'm like, oh yeah, one of those weird things happened to me again. <laughs> it's happened again. <laughs> it's just like, you're, you're on TV, aren't you? And I'm like, yeah, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's so great. And I, I, I can't have you on my show and not talk about your, you had, you had Ben Mendelsohn. On your show, talking about things happening, mm-hmm. dude, dude, it was a great, great episode, by the way. Yeah, yeah. it it better have been. <laughs> I know, yeah. Because <laughs> I was like, this is a true one shot. Um, <laughs> Man, you want How was you that? Wa- it was um another thing of like the meeting your heroes thing. Like he was like. Yeah, obviously, when you know you're going to do an interview like that, you, you're envisaging how you hope it goes. Oh, yeah. And, and how you hope, like, your one-hour relationship develops. And, and you know, we both grew up in suburbs of Melbourne. So I was, I was really hoping, you know, we grew up, a, like, in very similar circumstances and, um, you know, like a similar way of life and a like a type of humor and, and sort of like self depreciation and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was hoping that we could like sort of make that early connection and that would sort of lead the interview. And he was just a champ. Like he got into the spirit of it. And I was just like, as he was sort of going into character, like standing up for Krennic, like in universe, (laughs) standing up for Krennic and putting like other Imperials and other and and rebels down. I was just like, oh man, this dude gets it. He's like, again, like another dude that's like the real deal Star Wars fan, you know, it doesn't have a lot of time to go into the minutia the way we do, but like he just gets the spirit of, um, like Star Wars fandom and it was really cool to hear how like how the fandom affected him like when he did that walk out at Celebration London oh yeah and how like 
if someone's doing that and and I know like being there how impactful and how cool it was for me to be there like you want it to be a big thing for the actor as well Absolutely. like like you want them like it just not to be oh I had to do this promo thing they got me in costume whatever like right like it, like I I said to him I said oh it's the um you know, I, I I would never insult your acting ability, Ben, and 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 I I I believe you're a great actor. And he's sort of taking the piss at me, going, "Oh, thank you, Steele. That means a lot." You know, I said, but <laughs> I I felt like you didn't really have the Krennic character down for the whole. I, I saw you breaking character there a little bit with a, a sly grin, and he said, yeah, "It was." It was one of the biggest challenges of my acting career. It was <laughs> like I, I I was looking forward to coming back out out of character and just being able to, you know, relish how cool it was. So yeah, he was um I, I, I would say perfect. He was exactly how I'd hoped. He he like he is actually way more into Star Wars than I hoped he was gonna be into Star Wars. Sweet. So um yeah. That's so, so cool. But, um, yeah, so when we're talking about, like, interviews and stuff. Yeah, and, of course. And sort of, like, the strategy around it. So I opened – I had this story of a listener that had purchased the Star Wars soundtrack off him at, like, a flea market, a really famous flea market in Melbourne. And – um because he was sort of like a TV personality. Like, Ben Mendelsohn has sort of been on TV since, like, he was 12 or something. So, gotcha. he, so you know, he's gone in and out of, like, do you know what I mean? Like, he wasn't always in the eye of the storm. But, sure, you know, he was like someone that was, you know, you knew, sort of knew, oh, there's that guy, he was in that show. So, yeah, so someone remembered buying the 12-inch vinyl from him from this swap market and or swap meet, whatever. And flea market and the so I opened with that story like because that you know I'd go there and sell stuff as well mm-hmm. and so it was sort of like we were sort of just talking about our experiences at that swap meet that have nothing to do with Star Wars but that's how like you do that it was sort of like my strategy to sort of get a rapport up and get some common ground and like relax him that maybe like, cause do you know what I mean? Maybe in his mind, he was going to sit down for an hour of like the Death Star is 16 kilometers wide. Uh, why, why did you choose this circumference for the planet? Like, right. do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, I don't know what he thought. And, and he did actually say to me afterwards that um, it was a very pleasant surprise. How the sure. podcast went. So um, yeah, it's like stuff like that in the interview where like, sometimes it's it, it, yeah you have to plan out maybe the thing you most want to know it could be better to put that way deep into the interview when the person like has a trust in you and you've got a rapport and they sort of get where you're coming from yep with the angle of the interview and stuff like all that stuff is like i i find that so interesting to have like a guest and then you know you read a few interviews with them you watch a bit of their stuff um, like I, I, I try to listen to every podcast that they've been on some, you know, some guests are harder than others, but, um, then you can sort of have your questions and then with those questions, you can sort of copy and paste them around the word document to where it's going to sort of lead like a narrative or a story, like, like through the podcast, like, you know what I mean, you want to oh, build yeah. up. To that yeah you know, that, that that cool thing at the end um like like working on that stuff to me is like um really fun and and interesting oh yeah same we we have a very similar process what i do is like i when i'm going to have somebody on it's 99 percent of the time someone i've been following for a while and i'm like oh, i'd really like to get to know this person and i only pick people that i think i'll get along with because there's nothing worse than having someone you're not getting along with and you're like then what's the point of doing this at all because I'm more interested in the conversation, genuine human connection. And I'll know a lot about them because I've, I'm a fan of their work. And so I'll have these like questions in the back of my head as like backup in case the 
in case like we run out of things to talk about which never happens but it's like oh you don't want it to go dead and be like uh so you're you work to swap me too that's cool me 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 too Mm -hmm. yeah you know it's just talking you just got to talk to people as people it's really fun i like it a lot it's all right yeah right if you're into that kind of stuff i guess yeah i guess (laughs) but can you believe i'm talking for over an hour and a half uh yes and no (laughs) i can believe it but it it has gone surprisingly fast yes i um i always um like when people like organize to do podcasts and they go oh it'll be you know be a half hour or whatever and i'm like it'll be an hour Because I just don't shut up, and then I like as I did here, just like tangent, tangent, like quadruple tangent. Then you have to work your way back to work out where you're, like the best kind talking about. Yep. So so yeah, good fun. Yeah, um, I appreciate. This has it. been awesome. Good. I'm really glad you enjoyed it because I've had a great time. Yeah, I, I'm I, my my show is just that. It is a talk about whatever. Like so, we have a mutual friend. Details. Ah, nice. B- best dude ever. Him and I recorded the longest podcast uh, ever. It was three hours because the same thing. We just get going and it just flows. And I always say it's typically an hour. Like, we'll see how it goes. Like, I'm not watching the clock. But uh, I I was like, if I can get to an hour, if it's not going well, cool. I can cap it at an hour. But if it goes well, we'll just see how it goes. And this has been really, really fun. I, this is pretty much on par because I feel like I increase a podcast length by about 60%. So <laughs> I feel like this is, um, yeah, I, this is mathematically to the pattern. But um, this is up to I, standard. I, I, I've done ones at, at, for now this is podcasting where, because they have breaks and sometimes the breaks are like half an hour. My fault, partly. <laughs> But it's like, at the end, it'll be like 4.30 in the morning. And I'm just like, going to Randy, what, how much, how much should we record? Like what ended? <laughs> and it's like, oh, yeah, we, this, this episode's going to be three and a half hours. And it's like, whoa, that is just amazing. But it, yeah, it's super fun. And um, it's like, like the internet like sucks. <laughs> But more than it sucks, it rules. I agree. And the, um, like the way, um, like, like the podcasts and, and, and all the fan media and stuff, like, and, and like social media, like it, it enriches people's experience of, um, their, their chosen franchise or media, like, so much Agreed. like um it's like these films like they're very important to people regardless of podcasts or whatever but I, I i definitely think or know that people like the films are way more important to people because of podcasts because of like the shared community and um like I, I, I even like just from my own experience of like I you know had the other podcast I love Gringo Letters, and then I sort of like after a few years said all right well I'm also going to do this other podcast come check it out if you want I'm going to talk about Star Wars in a hopefully fun way, and um and I I, I sort of um I should have mentioned this before I, I sort of tried to make the podcast for people that didn't listen to Star Wars podcasts ah smart so the original title was this isn't the podcast you're looking for (laughs) because um i thought that people that listen to star wars podcast like i sort of finding i was finding on facebook that um a lot of people took star wars a lot more seriously than i Mm -hmm. like i'm very like i love star wars but I always I like to roast Star Wars as well. Right. Like I like finding silly things that happen in it, and like I love watching um, that 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 ILM employee's face in the beginning documentary when George Lucas starts highlighting storyboards. Oh yeah, this is gonna be CG. Oh. This is gonna be there, <laughs> dude. That is like my favorite <laughs> thing. Like that is the best. His face is like. 
I, I, it, it, it's such joy. It's such joy. I need like his <laughs> face on a drone getting attacked by seagulls, yeah. <laughs> and, and I am at, at peak happiness. But um, that's what he felt yeah. like—a drone getting attacked by a seagull, just looking at the board. Yeah, right. <laughs> he was George Lucas. The CGI was the drone, and he was the seagull. That's he was right. trying to peck George Lucas away. <laughs> um, but yeah, the the media, um, the fan media around stuff um, makes it like just enriches people. It does. It does for me. Like I, um, you know, like sometimes, like I'll like say Rebels. I'm like I've got to watch the Rebels because I want it. Otherwise, I can't listen to these six podcasts. Right. Do you know what I mean? Because I can't. I've got to do it in chronological order. So I've got to agree. Like. I, so I, yeah, I have to watch this so then I can listen to all the reaction podcasts and stuff. So it, it's um, I, I I sometimes feel like yeah, franchises don't. Maybe it doesn't matter that they don't acknowledge it, but um, yeah, at how much like we're helping, whether it's Star Wars or you know, lost or, you know, wrestling and stuff like that. It's like, there's this, um, like people creating like a community around your franchise and then they're like, they're monitoring it and then they're like cultivating it. And, um, it's a, a very mutually beneficial relationship, especially for the franchise. Cause you're getting all this like free PR. Like think about this, like at, at Comic-Con, right. They they have to you know like they dress people up as the characters like out in front of a stand right they don't have to, Star Wars doesn't have to do that that's true people just come and do it anyway right right they just yeah so why would you hire like like you don't have to rent a crowd if you've got a free one that's right that's right yes yeah, the community is what keeps it going for sure yeah and 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 the culture like I noticed on the Star Wars show this week. They had um, – it was all San Diego Comic-Con. Yep. And um, I kind of think it's that shows at its best when it, they have something like that to cover. Sure. Like, that leads I, to um, hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I sort of um, – yeah, I sort of feel like it's good when it has that purpose. But, yeah, so they're interviewing people about the Clone Wars thing, and, and I could saw like most of the people they used were all like like costumed or – or um or you know like had denim jackets with all the pins like they were sev- like they were like deep into the culture sort oh, of yeah. thing um and yeah so that, that that sort of stuff like, like you look at like you know Sal Perellis and 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 Liz and Lizzie oh, and yeah. Axel um like how like man like what amazing PR that you've got this family that is like they're bonded like through their love of this cartoon. Like it's like, whether you like the cartoon or not, like, like that is, it's, it's pretty sick. I agree. I agree. And I love that. Like Dave acknowledges it. You know, he's like these people, it's just cool. Star Wars is the best man. Yeah. It, it's nice when, um, you know, there can be that sort of interaction and sort of acknowledgement at what, um, uh, you know, what, 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 what people have done. Do you know what I mean? Like, and you see oh, yeah. like Amy Ratcliffe, like, you know, doing panels yeah, and, and amazing and stuff. And she's got a book and, um, yeah, all that stuff's really cool. It's so great. So before <laughs> I forget, I have to, I have to get the, get the plug out. Where can people find you online? Um, pretty much on anything at Steel Wars. So, like whether it's YouTube or Twitter or Facebook or our website, um, Instagram, it's S T W E L E, uh, and then Wars, Steel Wars. Um, and I do a podcast at the moment. If uh, is this coming out like this week? Uh, next week. Next week. Okay, so we'll just be wrapping up our San Diego Comic Con coverage. You can um, watch on YouTube or listen in full to the, the full Clone Wars saved panel. Yeah. And I, I love conventions cause I, I make these things called blog pods and they're kind of like yeah, all you your do. diaries. And um, so, yeah, if I just bump into like literally if, 
someone says hi on the street, I normally pull out my recorder and record a little thing. So it's sort of like the experience of what it's like to be at a convention, bumping into all these eclectic people, whether um, it's just someone in a line with me or someone I know or um, like a, a licensee like Hasbro or Funko. Um, yeah, so it's sort of like an audio diary of my experience and they're, 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 they're pretty cool. Like, um, they are. you can use that one where, um, Brian gets mentioned at, <laughs> at, at, and, and then sort of me and Amanda Ward do a, a running commentary of the 40th anniversary panel, which is like, cause I, I, I really cherish all those, like those magic electric moments of, um, like just the electricity and it was just like just to like hear Amanda's reaction when Hayden Christensen came out. Oh like, yeah. It like that stuff is um it's it's really cool. So I, I sort of try to document like that like the enthusiasm behind Star Wars and stuff on, on those. And uh yeah, there's a Ben Mendelssohn interview. Um I'm doing like every two weeks uh, a new show called Hyper Chat and that's sort of like a a chat show about star Wars and we take listener calls and you can watch it on video and we sort of casually go through the news and just have conversations that are sort of topical. And then like people call in and, and they join the, the conversation, which is really fun. Um, or partly because you have to do hardly any preparation because yeah. people call <laughs> in with topics. It's brilliant. Uh, it's a little scam that I've got going. Thank you, callers. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and then I'm trying to like fill up um, YouTube now as well. So a lot of the stuff I'm I'm trying to work out in a visual way. The, the last episode I did with details, you can sort of watch. I sort of edited our two Skype screens together, so you can sort of watch it if that's what you're into. Um, yeah, so tons of stuff. And I'm always like, if you're on Twitter and you're not aggressive, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm down to talk Star Wars and, um, and do all that stuff. Once, once I feel like people are taking it too seriously, um, Less fun. yeah, yeah, are you, you, you are muted. You are <laughs> muted. So I, I, I think it's like, I like this idea of being cultivating since the last Jedi is you can not like stuff in a fun way. True. And, Very and, true. Part, and part of that, how I do it is kind of self parody. Mm-hmm. Like I make fun of how much I can't stand the Ewoks blinking on the Blu-ray. <laughs> oh, it's a, it's seriously, fair. it is a, That's fair. it's a, it's a crime. <laughs> um, oh, the, I, yeah, I want to learn how to blink in unison with them. So I never see them blink. <laughs> I mean, we've discovered the answer right there. Yeah, I've got to get the timing, like you know, like like if I can get the code, like one thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, blink. That's right. Six, <laughs> yeah, so I, I got to get that code down. But um, yeah, so I'm I'm everywhere. That maybe I'm in too many places, but find no find. One of them, but yeah, I, I I work hard on the podcast, and if uh, you want to check it out, I would be uh, super grateful because I know there's a lot of other shows out there, and your time is valuable. But I'm I try really hard, guys. So give it a shot. That is true, you do, and it comes through in the work, and you got that sweet sweet SEO, Steel Wars everywhere. I dig it a lot. But dude, this was really really fun. I, I appreciate your time. I'm glad we can make it work. Yeah, no, it was it was it was um. Yeah, I had a ball. This is this has been a blast. Sweet. And uh yeah, if you ever want to come back on, doors open. Uh yeah, I'm I'm yeah, of course I would. Whenever <laughs> whenever you see fit, um I um I am down. I am down. This was this was great fun. And uh you can join my my content family tree. Yeah. <laughs> well you're already in it. You're already in it. You've That's already right. been I've been right. here all along. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, this was great. Thank you again for coming on. And...
Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you enjoyed it, stop by iTunes, give it a five-star rating. It really does help push the show to the front of the algorithm so that more people can find it. Uh, if you'd like to follow me, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff as Jedi Brian. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. So until next time, be well.